Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. In today's matchup, we've got a pair of running backs who are hoping for plenty of touches to come their way. It's Zeke Elliott's Cowboys going up against Freeman's Falcons. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, thank you very much. It's the National Football League presented by EA Sports. A moment ago, here was the scene. The Falcons coming out from their tunnel to the roar of all the folks here in Atlanta. We're ready for football as these Falcons get set to match up with the Dallas Cowboys. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And, Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. Here's Bosher to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Dak Prescott leads out the Dallas Cowboys, and last week he led this crew to an impressive victory in front of an amped-up crowd in Dallas over Kansas City, 28-17. That's a big-time game, wasn't it? Big-time environment, two of the best in the league at that point. And what I like about Dak Prescott's game, he's doing what I suspected he would do in preseason, elevate to the level that it doesn't always have to be off of Ezekiel Elliott's running in order for him to have success. He can do it on his own. the first carry for Ezekiel Elliott and he'll take this one up close to the 25 yard line give him a couple on the carry there second and eight as we glance at the Cowboys starters how about the nugget we learned about Terrence Williams last week 141 yards and, and what did you tell me on that the first 100 yard receiver in the last 14 games for the Dallas Cowboys that's hard to believe it really is hard to believe and he got off to a great start had 105 of those yards by halftime Terrence Williams is a good receiver in his own right but we really expect Des Bryant to be the lead guy. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Prescott from the gun. And he hits Jason Witten, the tight end. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Dak fighting his tight end. Witten and the Cowboys have a first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. First down, Prescott. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. And here now the defensive starters for Atlanta. When Atlanta drafted Desmond Trufant and Robert Alford, they thought they were going to get some young corners that would grow into the job, and boy, have they been right. Desmond Trufant, Pro Bowl in 2015. Unfortunately, hurt in 2016. Wasn't able to play in the Super Bowl. Might have been the difference down the stretch against the New England Patriots. Ten yards still left on second down. A give to Elliott. And that play is blown up. Losing yardage back at the 35.
And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. A dump off to Elliott. And he goes out right around the 39. A gain of four on the play, and it'll be fourth down. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape, or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area that they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. On is the punt team now as this one sent away. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. So it's time to see if this Falcons offense can bounce back from a disappointing defeat to Carolina last week, 20 to 17. It, it really was a heartbreaking loss for Matt Ryan and company. Did it feel like a must win game for the Falcons going in? Yeah. Even now, though it's not, it felt like it. Right, didn't it? with what Carolina's done, the Saints. I mean, it, it's tough. Now they're at four and four. Yeah, they've still got a lot ahead of them in terms of the division, but they've got to get it together fast. And Matt Ryan, he's thrown more interceptions. I think he's thrown the exact same number of interceptions this season as he threw all of 2016. On first and 10, it's Ryan. And he will go down, a Cowboys sack. Tyrone Crawford in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. for the first time with Devontae Freeman. And a nice gain there as he'll be taken down just shy of the 20. They get six yards back on the run, but still have a third and long situation forthcoming. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, got to make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. They run the play fake to Coleman. Now Ryan. And he'll go out of bounds across the 35-yard line. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe-tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. So here, the men in charge are going to be looking at whether or not the receiver had possession of the ball as he went out of bounds. And they have to make sure that the receiver got both feet down in bounds as well. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. here on first down and it pops free the collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down all right let's
let's look at the offense. Devontae Freeman, this is a guy that you wanted to talk about, so take it away. Brandon, have you seen a running back play with such joy as well as such fury? I love the way he runs the football and attacks defenses. Second down, Freeman. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. We'll give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. Now a play fake here on first down. And he's going to be out of bounds down near the 35-yard line. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. I don't believe that this opening drive is surprising to either one of us after the time we spent with the coaching staff and players prior to the game. What about you? Absolutely. Not only that, but that big article in this paper this morning about their philosophy on starting games like you're shot out of a cannon, and that's what they've done. Very methodical here on this first drive. Yeah, so many teams talk about that fast start. We're actually seeing it happen right here in front of us. But now the kicker. Can they cap it off by putting the ball in the end zone? And the coach has decided to throw the red flag. He will challenge this play. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. So here we go. First and ten now. From the gun, it's Ryan. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. And a look at the defense for the Cowboys. I think most people locked in on Byron Jones when he came out of UConn at the NFL Combine where he darn near jumped out of the stadium because of his vertical leap. But there's so much more to his game than that. Played cornerback and safety in college. And they can use that same ability to move him around in the NFL in order to create great matchups on defense for Dallas. Back to the running game. It's Freeman. Takes this to the 32, maybe the 31, as the defense rallies quickly after the nice move. It's a gain of about three, but it's going to leave him with third and still seven yards to go. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Ryan now off the bootleg. He'll get the first down and more inside the 20. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. Well, I know from past experience, before you actually play a game, you visualize what's going to happen. And I don't know anyone who doesn't visualize themselves being in the center of what's going on. That's three catches for him here in the early going. He's got to like the way this is starting. Absolutely. Three catches on any drive is good. Opening drive, that's a tone setter. And now inside the red zone, the offense will operate. Hey, 
This is Freeman on first and 10. And this play gets blown up. They'll lose yardage back at the 17. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Brad, it wasn't that long ago that the guy playing that spot was an outside linebacker type of a guy. Now, as a defensive end, how about the speed that he used to get into the backfield and make the play? And the seemingly endless drive continues. Again, they'll run with Freeman. And he's got this one down to the 10. It's a seven-yard pickup. They'll be looking now to third and six. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. So they need six yards here on third down. They're two for two on third down tries so far on this drive. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. And this is caught for a touchdown. Now hold everything here, flag in the backfield. This one might be coming back. So erase the red zone score. They'll have to dial that one up again. And you know how difficult it is to strike in the red zone because things are a little bit more condensed. You've got to go back to their play chart and see if they can dial up another one. This offense, two for two on third downs on this drive. They're in for a tough test here, though. Third and long. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. Neutral zone infraction, defense. And he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped, but I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. And on third down, the Cowboys bring in an extra defensive back. Ryan. And probably the wise decision there. No one open. He just throws it away. And that keeps the field goal on the table as it's fourth down. Those throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. And the 42-year-old veteran's kick is up and good. And the Falcons are out to a 3-0 advantage. So they get three. They were hoping for six. An unlucky number 13 play drive. Well, you go to the sideline after putting three points on the board. Happy, but you wanted to be ecstatic. You wanted to have six on the board. On the opposite sideline, though, the defense, I think they're high-fiving each other, only giving up three after letting them run that much offense. to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five as he's taken down right at the 20. 
Well, let's go league-wide before this next drive starts. Last week, we discussed some of the trades that happened. Jay Ajayi did look pretty good in a Philly uniform. Long touchdown run. Boy, they really made a great deal to get him, and now they compare him with LeGarrette Blount, and you kind of got a thunder-lightning type thing, and Ajayi showed some lightning against Denver. But how about this? Kelvin Benjamin went, but on a Thursday night game, not enough time to get him ready to play for his new team in Buffalo. Jimmy Garoppolo did not play with San Francisco. We'll find out when they both will get on the field. And how about the Saints and the Cardinals? Because remember, the Adrian Peterson trade, I think it benefited both teams. Yeah, AP went over 100 yards. Kamara and Ingram, they really settled in as well. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. Again, it's Elliott. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Here's Prescott. Oh, he may have gotten lucky. Tried to dump it off underneath on the check down. Nearly picked, instead it's incomplete. I better raise my voice a little bit here because one thing we can already tell, even in the first year in the league with this new stadium, it's going to get loud in this place. Yeah, the old place was loud, but I think we're getting a sense that this place is going to be louder. Yeah, they're riding that momentum of that 2016 team that finished their year in the Super Bowl. Now, now comes the Cowboys punter. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. This will be fielded at the 17. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Now the Falcons offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had a field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? right. <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. A fake to Freeman. Now it's Ryan. And he'll be out of bounds up near midfield at the 49. That one goes for 24 yards. Brandon, so many times we see the crossing route start as a quick hitter, but in this play, he had time in the pocket and waited for him to clear going across. So the offense has it first and 10. that time for number 12 as they move the chains. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. Toss to Freeman. He finds some open field here. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. So that flag will cost him 15. 
And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. A free five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. So first down, five yards to go. Now Ryan. And he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. Austin Hooper from eight yards out. And the Falcons will extend their lead. A good tight end is a heck of a weapon for any quarterback, especially when you're able to create some mismatches. Sometimes they work against a linebacker. Sometimes they work against a smaller defensive back. But when they find it, they go to it, and it often results in touchdowns. Now Matt Bryant on for the point after. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10-zip. Scoring summary, three-play drive, and the end result, an Atlanta touchdown. Here's Bosher to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he's simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. And now here come the Cowboys. And this is their third drive. Maybe the focus right now, not so much on points, but getting their first first down. And when you start off a game, you don't even think that's an issue, do you? But you go a drive, a second drive, no first down, that becomes an issue. Now you got to think about, okay, what type of play calling do I have to do to get us in a spot to pick that first one up? Start on the ground with Elliott, shouting through the defense. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. But at least he was able to break that initial contact, or it could have been a loss. Yeah, give credit to the defensive player, though. What did he do? Made him slow down, slope his feet, and allowed the rest of the guys to get there to finish him off. A second down throw for Prescott. And this one complete to Witten over the middle. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Short of the sticks after that completion, and now it's third down for this offense. They'll try and run for it with Elliott. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Well, Stan's the reason they give Zeke the ball there. I mean, let's face it. Last year, 
Led the league in first downs picked up. Yeah, 91 of them, 19 more than second place David Johnson. Yeah, you can see the confidence that the team has in him touching the football. Offensive line wants to block even harder because of him. Fresh set of downs here. They keep on the ground with Elliott. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. I have to admit, I'm excited by that play call and the end result because this is a team that's down big early in the first quarter, and a lot of teams will just panic, abandon the playbook, and just start firing the ball all over the place. It's way too early for that. Stick to what works for you. Down double digits, and we talked about their game plan being both running and passing there. You're right. They're sticking to the game plan, getting the ground game going. A lot of football left to be played. Prescott now from the 50. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Deion Jones, the linebacker. And they'll set up shop right near midfield at the 49-yard line. Well, that's a drive killer right there. Not a really confident throw either. This one was kind of up for grabs, and it's going to come down the hands of the wrong team. Here comes the Falcon offense now as they get set to take over here. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Going to give it to Freeman. Freeman with a fast feet. And he's brought down. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. Getting the sense, Charles, they're going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. Final 30 seconds of this first quarter, and it's been a quarter dominated by the guys with the football. Freeman again, a first down carry. Even with the good footwork, he'll be stopped just inside the 35. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. Now, prior to the snap, we hit all zeros as time has run out on the first quarter of play. 10-zip our score. We're back to Atlanta in just a moment. This is the NFL, and you're watching EA Sports. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, it's the Falcons in possession to begin quarter number two. They face a second and seven to start things out. the 25 now at the 24. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense, because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. The 
The Falcons averaged 34 points a game last year. Tops in the NFL with that powerful offense. And they're already looking for more here as they've got it first and 10. Now they'll throw it with Ryan. To the sideline, and that is a heck of a catch as he was able to get both feet in. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. And now a 10th carry for Freeman. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Four yards on the play, and that leads to the first and goal. And that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork, and they add a little, little bit of power, and you find a way to pick up first downs. time he's not going anywhere they'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage they'll say no gain on the play and it'll be second and goal a well executed blitz no doubt great job by the linebacker maybe the quarterback if he could have seen that could have audible there yeah he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense all the gaps were filled except for the one the offense really wanted to run through and that was filled by a big man wanting to make a tackle and he made a great tackle Here's Ryan. And the Cowboys' pressure gets there this time for the sack. David Irving busting through to get him for a loss of six. Second goal, last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack. But he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football. Had to eat it and ended up on the ground. So the sack pushes him back, and now third and long for Ryan and the Falcons. From the shotgun, Ryan. And that is caught. Touchdown, Falcons. Julio Jones from 17 yards out. And the Falcons will add on to their lead. And partner, they found a gap there on the post pattern, and it was in the middle third of the field. And that's really difficult to do because ordinarily the safeties are back there to prevent that happening. But they found the opening and exploited it. Here's Bryant for the extra point. He's got it, and it's 17-0. So that drive in total eight plays. And the Falcons score to cap it off. Here's Bosher to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Dak and the Cowboy offense heading back onto the field. He's got to dig deep here, doesn't he? Team's losing. He's not playing well either. And they always tell you, don't press. You'll make things a little bit worse. 
but in this particular situation, you try and heighten your play a little bit. So far, he's thrown one interception. He wants to balance that off with at least one touchdown pass in order to get his team back moving forward. They'll start the drive with Elliott. And he'll take it ahead to the 28-yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. Second down, Prescott, and Beasley with it over the middle. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. A Dallas first down, Prescott hook it up with Beasley. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. They play fake to Elliott. Now Prescott. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. Trying to stick with Dez. There got too physical. Pass interference. I like your note there. So physical. Hard for any defender to cover Dez Bryant without drawing a pass interference call. After the penalty, it's Elliott. And he'll get across midfield and down to the 48-yard line. A gain of three, second down. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Florida Atlantic alum. This is Alfred Morris. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five yard or a 15 yard inadvertent or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. And that is incomplete. Carry now for Elliott. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. 
When you put together a formula for winning defense, it's exactly what we're seeing in this game. Controlling the line of scrimmage, attacking, and changing everything so that now they're playing in the offense's backfield. They're playing an excellent game. The Cowboys on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and 11. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. And that is incomplete. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. So on fourth down, Jason Garrett sends in his field goal unit. From the right hash, this from 48. And his kick is good. Didn't hit it all that well, but he got enough on it to put it through. And they're on the board at least here. It's now 17 to three. So it's a seven play drive, but it stalls out in the end. Let's credit the defensive front seven. They were a little leaky at the start of the drive, but they stiffened toward the end. Back out Nugent now after the field goal as he'll send it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. Yeah, back onto the field now comes Devontae Freeman. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game. Through the air first, maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on, and then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, try to get him more involved here on this drive, maybe. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. The drive will start with a carry by Devontae Freeman. Devontae Freeman, they're not going to get him. Pass the 20. Touchdown, Falcons. Devontae Freeman, 72 yards. And the Falcons will extend their lead. And with that carry, he's already over 100 yards here in the first half. And Parker, you know exactly what he's saying to his teammates right now, right? Especially to the play caller. Give me the ball. Again <laughs> and again, <laughs> again, again and again. It's not that heavy, sir. I'll take it. Bryant now to tack on the extra point. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. So they hit pay dirt on just one play. The long run, the scamper, and a very nice scamper into the end zone for the touchdown. Bosher to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line.
The Cowboys offense heading back out and ready to go again. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's that's it. The first down carry by Elliott. Big hold to the 30. And he's brought down after a good game. That good for 22 and a first down. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other backs in the league. They go to Elliott again. And he's going to take this one up only to about the 44-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Not that we necessarily see this as being in the cards, but worth noting that 21 points would equal their franchise record for largest deficit overcome. Certainly plenty of work to do between now and then. Fighting through, and he's got space. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. A tough run by Ezekiel Elliott, the fourth overall pick in the 2016 draft. If you watch tape of him in college, you saw plenty of those runs because I know the highlights showed him in the open field breaking away from people, but that's how he wore down defenses, those exact type of runs. This is Morris. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? to get this one down to the 30. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense. Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. They'll try to throw down. Prescott. He hits Beasley right side. And he'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. This will be caught inside the 10. 12 more yards there and another first down.
Prescott from the gun. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for his tight end, James Hanna. And that'll bring up second down. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after him. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Second and goal. They still need eight yards to find the end zone. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. Probably going to have to stretch for this one. This is four down territory. They've got to get it in with the deficit that they're facing. Absolutely. It's not the fourth quarter, but still, you, I think you, you can't be thinking three here. No, if you do that, you might as well go ahead and fold up on this one. But I don't think they're built like that. Prescott. He dropped it. Couldn't hang on in the end zone. So no six points incomplete. Brandon, some of those windows that throw the football that exist when you're between the 20s, they don't exist when you're this close to the goal line. But as a former DB, I liked it closer to the goal line. Tighter windows made it easier to cover people, actually. And the 12-year veteran knocks it right through. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. And that field goal caps an 11-play drive. It's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. Back out Nugent now after the field goal as he'll send it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee and they'll start at the 25. Heading back onto the field, here's a look at Devontae Freeman now. He's already cruised past the 100-yard mark. We haven't even gone away for halftime yet. He might not want halftime. <laughs> all right, why cool off? Keep everybody here. <laughs> Let's stay out on the field and keep going. But all that being said, everything is really working well for them. The play calling's been excellent. The blocking's been terrific. And obviously his vision and legs have hurtled him to this big number so far. We could be seeing something really special here. And we'll see how much they give him the ball here. Off the play fake to Freeman. It's Ryan. Connects with Sanu right side. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A very solid gain of 27. remain here in the first half we're back to Atlanta right after this timeout a reminder coming up at halftime Larry Ridley will join us from Orlando with our halftime report but business to take care of before that Throw on first down with Ryan. And this is Gabriel on the catch. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 15 yards through the air and a first down. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, 
you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. And he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that. And that's what he did. Encroachment defense. So they jumped on the left side of that line. And you know when you're at the end spot, you are like in the starting blocks, waiting for the pistol to fire and go. And he jumped a little bit too early. little first half here, your partner. And it's a first half that leaves us anticipating what can still come. I mean, two touchdowns already here through the second quarter. There could be plenty more before this game is over. Here's Bryant for the extra point. And they open the lead up now to 25 points. The drive there only spanning three plays. And the end result, an Atlanta touchdown. Bosher to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26 yard line. And our focus shifts here to Alfred Morris. And for him, it's been pretty limited involvement down on the scoreboard. Maybe time to turn to this guy. And you know me well. Winning games to me means starting with the running game and continuing to press the running game. Maybe you go away from him a little bit now, but the bottom line is he hasn't touched it enough to make a difference. Well, they haven't established that running game yet. The question is, will they? And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Play action to Elliott. Here's Prescott. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. Well, this seems like a good time to make a quick pivot here and go back to week nine of the NFL because there were some pretty big milestones that were passed. Can we start with a kicker? Because we're going Adam to. Adam Vinatieri. Look, Adam Vinatieri to me is a first ballot Hall of Famer. I mean, what he's accomplished here, now he's in sole possession, second place in the league's all-time scoring list with 2,442 points. Needs 103 more. We're chased down the Hall of Famer, Morton Anderson. And he had Eli go over 50K passing yards. Jameis over 10K, second youngest to do that. And then Larry Fitzgerald, what did he do? Yeah, and the win against the 49ers moved into sixth place all time in receiving yards, passing Hall of Famer Tim Brown. How about Larry Fitz? The Cowboys on third down. Just one for five to this point. This is third and seven. Gun. Here's Prescott. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Help me out, partner. Was that incomplete? That was on a deep ball to Dez. And that's a surprise. The way he attacks the football in the air, 
It's always surprising to me when he doesn't complete a pass like that. Well, now comes the Cowboys punter as he's on to kick it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. And the Falcons, they have the big lead. And you can't help but let your mind go there. You think Falcons big lead second half. They lost a game that they led by 25 in Super Bowl 51, as we all well remember. And I don't think it's going to change them a whole lot in terms of their mentality because they were an attack team. They always wanted to be on the attack. And remember, a lot of people thought them staying on the attack maybe cost them in the Super Bowl against New England. But in this case, they definitely have learned that no lead is big enough. So I think they'll go out there with the idea of continuing to try to increase it. Now it's Ryan. Sanu with a grab over the middle. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Great change up there on the route and got that inside release, made it a successful pitch and catch. Well, the first thing you want to do is have him thinking that you're going outside. Make a move in that direction. Then you really don't run the route against the whole body of the defender. You run against a half of him and the inside half, and he took it right across his face, got inside, and won that route in a big way. It's Freeman, and he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. So we are at halftime here in Atlanta with the Falcons out in front, as we'll send you down to Orlando, where Larry Ridley has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to the EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. Let's take a look back at the first half. The Falcons are showing they're the better team right now and lead big at the end of two. The Cowboys just need to figure out a way to bounce back. So let's take a look at the highlights from the first half. Falcons on first and five. Hooper is wide open here on the catch. And this two-play drive goes for a TD. Falcons push the lead to 10. First and 10. The pass ends up being picked off. Jones is reading the play and comes away with it, ending the drive. Offense out now following the INT. Matt Ryan to his big play receiver, Julio Jones. And he finds his mark for the score. The lead now at 17. Now first and 10. Freeman's able to get clear of everybody. And he'll win the sprint to the end zone. The Falcons lead balloons to 21. First and 10. Ryan's on point with the throw. And he won't be brought down until he makes it to the 48-yard line. now later on the drive. Jones has got nobody around him on the catch. And a quick three-play drive ends with a score. The blowout is on. All right, Larry, indeed a one-sided affair to this point as we get set for half two. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This is fielded at the goal line. And he will be marked out right there at the 20-yard line. Getting set to go again, Mohamed Sanu is marching back onto the field now. Let's see here, Charles. Six catches, over 100 yards. Call that a pretty good day at the office. And I love the accumulation, the catches, the yardage. That means he's having a pretty good impact on this ball game and really helping his team out in a big way. Means he wants the football again, right? And it's funny because some of these receivers are very vocal about how much they're getting it. Others are quieter, but they still let you know, give me the ball, I'm going to make a play. Now a 
play fake here on first down. He hits his target. It's the tight end, Toilolo. And he's able to get up here to the 26. A gain of six there on first. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Second down and four. Gun. It's Ryan. He's got Freeman here. It's complete. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. Give him 30 yards there. After that nice game there, for the rest of the game, the defense is going to have to respect the running backs as passing threats as well. Not just play them strictly to run the football. They may be able to get downfield and catch it, too. After that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Now flags come flying in. One of the Falcons moved early. Well, this O-line's been great. They've got the big lead, so give them a pass there, I guess. Yeah, I would think so, because if we were grading them on their performance in this game, a lot of pluses in their boxes so far. After the mistake by the offense, it cost him five yards. And now first and 15. Ryan. Here's Sanu on the catch. 20. And oh, so close as he takes it all the way to the two-yard line. A big play there on the catch and run. 46 yards. This offense can certainly move quickly when they want to. Three plays, three pass completions, and the blink of an eye, they've got a first and goal. Almost felt like a lightning bolt hit in this game, didn't it? For them to get downfield that quickly, and now first and goal, expect them to attack right here on this play. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. They'll look to run with Freeman. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And now they're looking for the big boys to get him in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? They come out with one back and three tight ends. Now it's Ryan. And this is going to be incomplete. All right, partner, you look at a play call like that, and you have to think to yourself, that's got to be one to pad the stats a little bit, huh? He has had a great game throwing the football, and I think you're right, maybe getting a little greedy again down near the end zone. <laughs> And this offense on third down today, they've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and goal. It's Coleman here. And he will take it in for a Falcon touchdown. Tevin Coleman, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Falcons add on. Able to punch it in on third down makes it easier for those guys on the sideline. They didn't have a fourth down decision to make. Yeah, could you feel the exhale? Because they were already thinking ahead as all the good coaching staffs do. Anticipating what we have to make the call. They already had it lined up. Never even got to it. Bryant now to tack on the extra point. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. 
A drive that time of six plays. And Tevin Coleman polished it off with a touchdown run. Here's Bosher to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. Prescott looks to throw on first. And this one complete to Witten over the middle. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. His position, and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one, and that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league, those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. The give is to Elliott. And he'll muscle his way up to the 43 for a pickup of right around five. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. Second down following the run. They go back to Elliott. He's been busy. And give him about five as he gets this up to the 48-yard line. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. The offense on third down tonight, they've had their troubles. Just one for six. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. They'll run it now out of the gun. And able to pick up the first across midfield to the 47. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Well, someone's been having a good game so far. And you know something? Love has been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. They go play action here on first down. And his throw is incomplete. Cole Beasley, the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here. But that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open. And this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. They run with Morris. And he's brought down. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Oh, 
And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Throwing. Prescott. And he was hit as he threw it there, and it forces it incomplete. The good signal calls will never go back in the huddle and play the blame game because they need those guys to protect him. But on that last one, his offensive line, they lost their leverage very quickly, and that's why they were able to get to him and hit him as he tried to throw the football and force an incompletion. On second down, Elliott. And a short game down to about the 33. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. Well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game? On third down, it's Prescott. And that's caught by Beasley. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Now this will be the ninth play on this drive. Now Elliott. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. Ezekiel Elliott taking it in from seven yards away. And the Cowboys cut into that lead. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet or they just executed better. Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals before this one they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it worked very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the ball well. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it culminates in a touchdown run by Ezekiel Elliott. Now it's Nugent out to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Yeah, back onto the field now comes Devontae Freeman. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're back, because that means everything's coming together for you. The big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. you probably got some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. They'll run with Freeman here to begin the drive. And he's going to be stopped dead in his tracks. Right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And there's a nice stop for the defense. They've had a tough time containing this guy all game long. But maybe they can build a little bit off of that play. A little bit of confidence. A little bit of momentum. Yeah, every now and then you can actually tackle that guy. Second down, Freeman. 
And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. And that's one of the few times they've been able to contain him. He's had a heck of a game, and maybe he's getting a little bit tired from how many times he's carried the ball. But I always think back to what all those old coaches say. The ball's not that heavy. Keep carrying it, kid. On third down, Ryan. Finding Gabriel complete. And yeah, they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. 23 yards on the play. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. And now a first down following that long game. Here's Ryan. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. So we've got a second and five. Now Freeman, he's been busy today. And he has met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. But he was stopped on that play. We said plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then, the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. The Falcons on third down. They have been superb. Five for six to this point. This will be third and five. They run the play fake to Coleman. Now Ryan. And unable to connect on the long pass. It falls down incomplete. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. The punter Bosher on now as he gets this one away. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Ezekiel Elliott gets ready to go again here on offense as he shuffles onto the field. He is knocking on the door for 100 yards in this ball game. And it's so important. It doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. Just short of it, a little bit over. A little bit over feels better to everyone. Offensive line, running back, team totals, just something magical about breaking that barrier. Now he's right there on the doorstep now. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. A 20th carry here for Elliott. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. I think there's one element that just keeps increasing on defense in the NFL, and that's speed. They want it at every position, and we just saw there some linebackers that can go sideline to sideline, run past that trash, go past people, and make tackles near the sidelines. And not only near the sideline, but also in the backfield there for the loss. this one just shy of the 40 they'll mark him down at the 39 they give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs man these guys may not win this ball game but you certainly can't fault the effort of this man here today he's been a real thorn in their sides all afternoon and that last carry puts him over the 100 yard mark So the offense lining up first and ten. Tight, tight. Tight. 
Here's Morris. Morris fighting. He lost the football. And the Falcons say they have it. They do. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But, hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not only going to tip it. I'm going to doff my cap to him. Congratulations. Big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. Heading back onto the field, here's a look at Devontae Freeman now. And there are the numbers. Got off to that torrid hot start. We thought he was in for maybe a career day. Not the case. No doubt about it. It almost looks like a misprint after what we saw in the first half, but let's give a little bit of credit to the guys on our side of the ball. They went into halftime, made a few adjustments, and you know what else? They didn't lose their confidence in how their ability to play, because a lot of times you get beat down in the first half, it gets ugly in the second half. They've come out with a new... And this is one of those bang-bang plays, Charles. Did the knee hit first, or did the ball come out first? This is where you need that 20-20 eyesight, don't you, Brandon? You've got to see which one happened first. If the knee hit the ground, then they will keep possession. side as he's knocked down at the 46 two yards on the carry there it'll be second down this is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game it's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people hard to get them started again occasionally again it's Elliott and an alley to run and he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Atlanta. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. If he's their best threat on offense, he's your number one cover guy on defense. It doesn't matter about size. They have had him locked up. That just his first catch of the game. Big reason why they're down. So here we go, first and ten now. Prescott now. Going right side, he has Winton. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understand just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays. Makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And <laughs> what a really nice gain right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Second down, Prescott. Throw left side, caught by Butler. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Go. 
in the red zone this time. From the red zone now, Prescott. His throw incomplete. He was looking for Terrence Williams that time. And now it's second down. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Elliott running right. Trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. On third down, Elliott. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. Oftentimes when a guy has a game like this, he's going to take his offensive line out to dinner afterwards. But after a play like that, he may tell them, instead of getting the steaks, guys, we might have to go for the hot dogs. The critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Jason Garrett might be wanting to reconsider the decision to go for it there. And the Falcons' defense stands tall. They'll get the football back. Everyone gears up for third down, talks about the importance of it. But fourth down, that's truly the moment of truth play, isn't it? Everything's dialed up a little bit more. And, it, you know, it's such a momentum play, isn't it? Absolutely, because it can flip either way depending on who converts on fourth down. Yeah, here now come the Falcons. Now, the previous drive they punted, but that was just the first time they've had to do so in this game. And when they turn on the game film, the coaches will rant about this, right? They'll say, oh, God, we got to move the ball, guys. We can't punt the ball away. But they have to keep smiles off their faces because that's the first time in the game they've had to do so. They've moved it quite well. They'll overall be happy with what they've seen. This is Freeman on first and 10. And he goes across the 20 to the 22. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. But Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? First seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. So the offense has it first and 10. A 20th carry now for Freeman. Not much there. Maybe a couple up to the 35. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. Because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Coleman now. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. 
So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack. And on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. The Falcons on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. This is third and nine. Ryan. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. That's a first down if he holds on, but you saw the contact, able to jar it free from him and force a fourth down. Great play defensively there, as you said, just to knock it free, because if he had caught that, pass the sticks, first down. There's Matt Bosher now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. Dallas gets set to take the field. And last time they were very fortunate this offense. They went for it on four, turned it over in their own territory, but the other guys held up. <laughs> they didn't give up any points. So how about the guy with the number one headset on the sidelines, <laughs> the head coach? That was planned going into it, not necessarily to not get the first down or to, to have the defense have to hold up. But he up. trusted his defense. Trusted his defense very much, and I think that that's how he's going to play this game. Go for it. Be aggressive because I've got the wild bunch backing me up over here on my own sideline. <laughs> well, we'll see what his offense can do. A first down throw for Prescott. And his throw is going to be incomplete. But they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That yeah, came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Prescott from the gun. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Bryce Butler, the intended receiver, and it's third down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. The Cowboys on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. This is third and ten. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. Throw left side complete. It's Elliott. He's at the 40, the 20, 10, touchdown, Cowboys. Ezekiel Elliott, an 80-yard touchdown. And the Cowboys get a bit closer. Well, he's used to running it that distance. Here he had to catch it, too, before making the run. Heck of a play for the score. There's not many things better for an offense than a back who is a complete guy who can run it and catch it. And we just saw him complete a big-time play for a touchdown. Nugent on now for the extra point. And that'll cut the lead down now to 18. So the drive there, they went 80 yards in three plays. And it's capped off for the Cowboys touchdown. Now it's Nugent out to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. What's the key to this drive?
it to Freeman. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. Freeman and takes this one across the 35 to the 36, a gain of about four. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? The old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's while he's sitting? didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a defensive player of the year at the other, and they just locked people down. Here's Matt Bosher for Atlanta. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are, but with that last drive that culminated in a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. It doesn't matter where you start with the football now. They have to feel great about their opportunity. Jason Witten, the endeavor. That'll bring up second down. Well, too much oomph. Too much mustard there on that pass. They yeah, really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong, difficult. Yards there, Zanes. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage, when you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big time play by the defense. Fresh set of downs here. tight end there. Now brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. So they complete the pass and now they face a second down. To the air again. Prescott. Out left side here to Bryant. And he'll be taken down but not before he gets into enemy territory. Prescott fighting his big receiver Bryant there. your best cover guy on him and then change the coverages behind him throughout the game brackets double zone man you name it make sure he gets a lot of angles hey, 
First down and 10 now for the offensive group. is they take a little time to develop and it what's perfectly called for a defense blitz. and even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen that allows your blitzers to get there The Cowboys on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This is third and 11. He finds his man. That's Butler. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh Nicely executed curl route. We'll come back and see this one out after this. So the Cowboys in possession of the football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. First down, Prescott. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Des Bryant, the intended receiver, and it's second down. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the side. to the huddle they have a few words to say to their qb aren't they yeah hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw luckily fell in screen to elliott and he's going to get it down to the 33 yard line here only a yard there sniffed out well defended shy of the 25 here at the 26 yard line. They'll get six there on the run but it brings up fourth down. Now they got to get to the line quickly. Little time remaining and the Falcons defense stands tall. They'll get the football back. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't matter. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. Atlanta now coming out on the field. They have the big lead here late. They protected their home turf well, didn't they? They certainly did, partner. And just think about how good that feels because every team has a goal when they start the year to win at home. But they managed to get that done today. Just think about your routine stage. Translated that into a win. They did indeed. They... Now a handoff. It's Freeman looking for a seam but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage and that's it. No gain on the play. this fourth quarter losing the game but they're winning in the fourth quarter and what a fine line it is about what they're trying to get done because they're down their gaps and have the offense
gets hit him with a big play. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. Back-to-back -back runs, I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. The Falcons on third down, five out of guy but it was a fun little track meet wasn't it it was and you know the people really enjoyed this game they're the ones that like going to batting practice at the major league baseball <laughs> parks right seeing the 14 to 11 game that sort of deal that's right up their alley with what we saw in this one So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt. This has been a presentation.